wrap up the teaching on think big. Tell somebody, think big. Tell somebody, think big. Mention your name and tell yourself, think big. Uh -huh. So, we began the series on the waves of glory. And the first thing God wanted us to know is for us to think big. We have looked at part one on Sunday and we looked at part two on Tuesday. Today we are looking at the part three of Think Big. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive the spirit to think big. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you can never encounter the glory of God if you have a mediocre type of thinking. If your mind is mediocre, if your mind is substandard in thinking, if your mind is small in thinking, if I can get something small, you are going to limit the flow of God's glory into your life. And many times, God will stop with you where you stop. God stopped with Abraham's father and went on with Abraham because Abraham was ready to move. If you can think big, you will experience more glories in your life. The thinking big is not that be proud or be haughty. The thinking big is not for you to think that you are better than someone. But when I talk about thinking big, I want you to put your mind in the possibilities of God. So your mind must not stop where your capacity can get to, but your mind must be engrafted into the possibilities of God. Numbers chapter 13, actually this is the bedrock of the teaching on thinking big. Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. We are looking at the the, the history between their, their leaving of Egypt to their promised land. So Israel was caught in the process of Exodus. So part of Exodus is in Numbers. Actually, the, the writings of Numbers took place in the Exodus of the people from the wilderness into the promised land. So Numbers chapter 1 verse 2. This, uh, this is a people... God has promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. A land where they're going to have abundance. A land where they're going to have fulfillment. A land where they're going to prosper. And they were in the process of engaging God. And you see, God will not do anything without your involvement. God will only do things when you get involved with what he has promised. So, Numbers chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible said, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Numbers chapter 13 verse 1 to 2. So, we read 1. Move on. Send down men that, were, that, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of Israel, Every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Look at the early said that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto. So God had decided and had already prepared the land for the people. Now take note that it was a promise from God, not from man. So immediately you hear a promise from God. The Bible said that I'm not a man that I should lie or I should repent of the words that I have said. So God said, send men to go and spy, to go and examine the land I am giving to them. Follow the teaching. This was a land where they were going to have dominion, where they were going to live far away from Pharaoh, where they were going to live from slavery. They were not going to experience affliction. They, are, they, they were not going to work for people. But they were going to have dominion. And God had promised them, 
I think that they should be very excited and very positive minded that now we're going to have our own, now we're going to prosper, now we're going to have our peace of mind, now we're going to have prosperity in abundance. But you will find out in their action. One should think that the thought of their suffering in Egypt should get them energized to follow God fully no matter the price they are supposed to pay. It's the same story with us. When you become born again, it's symbolic of Israel coming out of Egypt. Now, out of Egypt, your life between Egypt and your promised land is dependent on how you would think as you follow God. Your thinking pattern will determine how far you can go in your destiny. Numbers chapter 13 verse 17 to 20. I want you to follow the teaching. I want to finish the teaching today. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. So, you see, God did not go to the people. God went to Moses. So Moses will come to them and command them to go and spy. But it was God that was sending them to go and spy. So, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them. He didn't tell them that God said you should go and spy. So sometimes be very careful how you react to your pastor's commands. Because it may not come with God said. It's another message. And Moses sent them to, the, to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them. Get up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land what it is and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in whether in tents or in strongholds. Verse 20. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage. If the Bible is yours, underline, be ye of good courage. That phrase talks about have a big mind. Because what you are going to see can scare you. So be of good courage. Have a good courageous heart. And have a big mind. Because what you will see, who you will see, the city you will encounter can put fear in you. Follow the teaching. And bring of the fruit of the land an evidence that you have been there. Because maybe if they stood outside the city and they saw what they saw, they would not even enter the city. But Moses said, when you go, bring an evidence of what is on the ground. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. Anytime you allow fear to take your thinking, it will kill the giant in you. Anytime you allow small thinking spirit to take over you in your pursuit in destiny, it can sink the glory of God in your life. We must have a big mind. We must have a big heart. We must have an audacious mindset in our pursuit with God. Else we will be limited. Our prayers cannot go beyond our thinking capacity. Until you can think big in God, you can never see the bigness of God in your life. Too many people are in church they are where they are not because God wants them to be where they are 
But they are where they are because they cannot think big. They cannot fathom that that which God is saying is possible. Look, the day you will begin to think right in God, that is the day many things begin to change for us. If you don't think big, you can't go far. I want to repeat that. If you don't think big, you cannot see the glory of God in your life. Any small mindset is going to produce a small man. And many Ghanaians, many Africans are like that. We think about me and my family. We think about if I can just start this business and, and just manage it. No, 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 no. So with that mindset, we start on the wrong note. We do some, we do things unprofessionally. Then you are not ready to pay for services. So you go and bring your uncle to be your accountant. You bring your cousin to be your secretary. You use your, 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 your nieces as your marketers. And not long, your business is gone. Many times I have, I have invested into business and set up my mom. Maybe we have set her up, sir. When she gets it, it will finish. As she's selling, she's chopping. Do, do you have some mothers like that? It's normal. It is everywhere. You do you become like that one day, so don't worry. Though the investment is great, the mindset is small. If you can think big, that thing that is in your hands can do more than you think it can do. Your destiny is in your mind. So all that the word of God does, the reason why God said, don't forsake the assembly of the righteous or the brethren is for the word of God to renew your mind. So Moses, it caused people, go and spy on the land. When you are coming, come with an evidence. When you get there, have courage because of the, what you see can scare you. There are some job opportunities the first day you start work, you wish you didn't accept it. Hello? Hello, hello? You did well in the interview. You, did, you didn't know what you were. When you entered and you saw the type of people who were going to work under you, you realize that they are even greater than you. If you don't take care, you will say, oh, uh, I just had an uh, admission outside the country and uh, I have to leave. You need to have a big mind. To follow God. Else you will be where you are. You will limit yourself. Big engines can go far. Small engines will break down. You need to have. Many believers don't have big minds. We have left it for the unbelievers. We must have big mind. And God intentionally asked them. To go and spy and come back. So it means that God was giving them a vision. What are you seeing? He said, go and spy and come. You have to have the ability to enter into the future whilst you are still in your today. Else you cannot get there. That is a vision. If they don't go and see and come, that is why exposure is very important. Exposure is very important. You have a talented footballer in Ghana. He will never do well. The same player, let him be born in Manchester. Grow there. Join the academy. You will see that he become a star. Exposure. So God said, my people, you have been slaves for too long. You have suffered. They've maltreated you 430 years. If I ask you to go straight into the world, you will fail. So select people, let them go and see what is there. Anytime you listen to the word of God, God is giving you a vision. 
God is telling you what is in his will and what is in his word that you can have. You must have a big mind to grasp it and possess it. This message is changing somebody forever. I said this message is changing somebody forever. I said this message is changing somebody forever. You are changing from small thinking to big thinking. You are moving from mediocre to big thinking. Somebody said I receive it. Fear kills big minds. Fear. It will swallow your big mind. So be careful those you surround yourself with. They will either pump faith into you or put fear in you. And as long as fear is implanted in your soul, your mind cannot think big. There are projects when you attempt and you ask for the estimate. When you hear, you say, oh, this one. I think it's a mistake. Cut your coat according to your size. It is not scriptural. It is an ungodly statement. Men who work with God don't respect that statement. We don't cut our coat according to our size. We cut our coat according to the size of cloth God can give to us. We cut our coat according to the size of the cloth God can give to us. And as long as our faith in God is strong, you will have more material to sow more good. I declare upon your life, come out of tradition, come out from the status quo and begin to think like your father. Somebody shout, I received that blessing. Somebody shout, I received that blessing. In the name of Jesus, Celebrate God with a good clap. Most of them had not come out of their slavery mentality. And most of us are like that. We are still, we are, our body is in church, but our mind is still with the world. Our body is in church, but our mind is still in family traditions. Our body is in church, our mind is still engraved. In things that men believe in. We don't believe anything in God. We believe small. As for the small, pastor, we are okay. We are okay. I mean, small is okay. If small things happen to you, the glory will not be revealed. If small things happen to us, the glory of God will not, can you imagine after 8 years of this church we are still meeting in a classroom Amen. if even glory will go to God it will not be magnificent let's think big Spend time to think about your life. Since I started teaching, how many of you have sat down and began projecting some big things into your life? You need to sit down and project. It will determine your actions, your inactions, and what you will say, where you will be, what you will do. But if you have no big vision, if you are not thinking big, any wind is okay for you to flow it. Any place is good for you to be. Any music is good for you to dance with. But if you know where you are going, you will be a big thinker. Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. From today, receive the spirit of a mighty dreamer and a big thinker. In the name of Jesus, your amen is a connectivity to the prophecy. If God has given us salvation, what else can't he give us? If almighty salvation God gave to us and moved us from the kingdom of darkness, what else can God give to you? So why can't we think big? Your vision is what will bring the glory of God upon that family. That big dream. Yes, I'm going to push it further. You must, but first, you must think big. 
Pastor, don't you think that we should take little step at a time, little by little, but the thinking must be intact. If the thinking is small, by the time you take little by little, three steps, you stop. But if the vision is big, is big, you will never be reluctant. You will never be passive. You will always pursue after God because until the vision is actualized, you are not stopping. The small the vision, the little the energy. The small the vision, the little the push. The small the vision, the colder the purpose. I pray for you that in this age of yours, between now and five years from today, you will have an evidence of your big thinking in Christ Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a mighty clap of rain. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Quickly. Romans 8 32. The Bible says, He that spared not his, son, his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things. If God could give us a son, what can't he give you? Estates? Radio station? Lands? A music career? It's time to think big. When God was giving his only begotten son, he was not thinking about only you. He was not thinking now about only the Jewish people. He was not thinking about only the natives of Israel. He was thinking about the uttermost part of the earth. God thinks big. He may start small, but he thinks big. You must have the nature of your God. Think big. Think big. Think big. Be a deep thinker. And a big thinker. Tell somebody it's a big thing. It's a big and a deep thinking. Tell somebody it's a big and a deep thinking. Give the Lord a mighty clap of friend. <laughs> don't when, when you see somebody, don't look at his body to respect him. De detect his thinking capacity. I don't know why Africa. I don't know what kind of system we run in Africa. The vice presidents are always big thinkers than the presidents. <laughs> I don't know. In most African countries, you have the vice presidents who are very learned. Then the presidents, huh? I don't know why they do that. I don't know how it happens. But if there's going to be change in Africa, we need big thinkers. We need deep thinkers. If there will be change in your family, you must be a deep and a, a big thinker. You watch your family. Nobody has a house. There are people here whose family there's no, no house owner. The only man with that house is the house he inherited from his grandfather and has shared the room for family members. For at, During funeral, he is the go nana. You look at it and something must provoke you that you must become relevant. Relevance is embedded in your big thinking. Give the Lord a mighty clap of friend. <laughs> Open widely the gates of your mind and allow the Holy Ghost to inspire you. Some of you are sitting here. Your products are uh, people are waiting for your products. Your products, your pure water products, your, your bathing soap products. People are waiting for your products, your shirts. You are not thinking big. People are waiting for your thin tomatoes products, your, your, your thin apple products. People are waiting for your products. That we are not thinking big. It's time to think big. People will not understand you. I'll come to it. Maybe if you don't get it, the second service people will get it. People will not understand you. But think it. You don't pay for thinking, do you? 
thinking means you are creating space for the Holy Ghost to fill. Don't think small, please. Don't think small. Don't think mediocre. It's dangerous. You will limit the glory that should be revealed over your life. Great men are birthed in great mindsets. Great men. Abraham became great. We all celebrate him. Do you think if he was having a mediocre mindset, he would become great? Somebody living in his father's house. Living there. Having the properties of his father to himself. He left his earthly father's properties and followed the voice of his heavenly father without knowing where he was going. You must have a deep thinking capacity to do what Abraham did, to get what Abraham had. I thought you'd be clapping. There are many people who will never move. But Abraham had a deep thinking. Great men are birthed in great mindsets. You cannot become great until you develop a certain mindset. If your mindset is that I earn thousand cities, by 20th August, your money is finished. You can never become great. That mindset will not take you anywhere. And you have not even paid your tithe. You, you, you have not even given some to your family members. You have not even saved some. Some is not in insurance. You have, you, you've done nothing. You just chopped it and chilled with it. You, you, are, you, you, are, you will be where you are. There is no future for such a man. Great men are birthed with men with great thinking. Great mindsets. Many people pray. Many people pray. But many people don't think. So they end up at the same. Because after prayer, you must have a direction where you are going. And that is where God is calling you to. To think big. Don't think about what you have today to determine what you will think about. Think about the God in you. What God can do. What God can do. He makes one poor. He makes one rich. It means he can make you rich. He causes us to prosper. It means he can make you prosper. God is Jehovah Jireh. He provides for his people. It means that he can provide for the vision. What are you thinking about? Dream it, young people. By 30 years, you must have your own house. By 35 years, you must have your PhD. Ah, pastor, it's possible. Dream it. Dream it. You have one shop, believe God. In five years' time, I must have 30 shops. Ah, pastor, that is the only way you can enter into realms that when things are needed for people, you can also become a blessing. Give the Lord a mighty clap of you. You see Christians and they are fighting over one plot of land their father left for them. Killing each other. They kill, 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 kill. For one plot. Think big. And move on with your life. Move on with your life with God. If God is in the boat, you will get to a greater height. As God was in the ark of Noah, nobody inside got corrupted. They arrived safely on the dry land. I declare upon your life, as you begin to think big, may the Lord endorse your thinking. May the Lord bless your thinking. May the Lord provide for that vision. May the Lord be your helper. Somebody shout, I receive it. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Numbers chapter 13, verse 26 to 27. Numbers chapter 13, verse 26 to 27. The Bible said, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Verse 27. And they told him and said, 
We came unto the land whither thou sented us. And surely, somebody say surely. I want you to note that word. Say surely. Say surely. I heard somebody say surely. We are not in Ashanti region. I say surely. I went for a wedding with a friend. We were there. I've, 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 I've told you this before, but don't laugh. Say, I won't laugh. Are you sure you won't laugh? <laughs> and the pastor came and we're having the wedding and we're there. No. Then the pastor said, Madam Stara, then my friend hit me. Did you hear the word? I said, No, I didn't hear. So listen again. Madam Stara, do you stay by the place? I say, yeah. We are in Ashanti region. Give the Lord a mighty clap of me. The Bible says, surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Amen. You know, girls do have their own. The age doesn't come home. I didn't say anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your mind home. Let's, let's finish this one. When you are going home, you can talk about it. <laughs> Everybody has his own. The airways to have their own. The northness to have their own. It's in the language. If you want to know where somebody comes from, critically listen to the language. You will find out. You see, you are imagining things. It's not me. Me, I'm preaching. Amen. So you see that God did not lie to them. God told them that I'm taking you to a land that is flowing with what? Milk and honey. So God's word was sure. Follow the teaching. I'm wrapping up in five minutes. The land was flowing with milk and honey. Your tomorrow is filled with milk and honey. Follow God well with a good mind. A good mind is a big mind. A good mind is a deep thinking mind. A good mind is a believing mind. Follow God well because the land ahead of you is flowing with milk and honey. Pardon your thinking. Parting your dreams, parting your vision with the word of God because the word of God cannot fail. So any vision that is bet out of the word of God, that is run by the word of God, that relies on the word of God, it cannot fail. Sometimes our visions are selfish. Sometimes our visions are selfish. We are just ambitious for nothing. But we need to have big dreams that is tailored by the word of God. That is birthed out of the word of God. That is a sure way you know that you cannot fail. Pastor, he said we should go and dream big. Now when I was dreaming big, look at what has happened to me. Was it birthed out of the word of God? They had no problem because this was what God said. You went and you saw that the land was flowing with milk and honey. Let's journey on. you get what I'm talking about. The word of God hanging over your life. I'll end with this part of the message. I'll continue in the wedding passage. The word of God over your life. The prophetic word over your life will provoke you to take certain decisions and it will provoke your thinking pattern. That is why you must not compare yourself with somebody. Because the word over your life will not be the same as the other person. So if the other person is dancing pan logo, it doesn't mean that you should also dance pan logo. Because the word of God on you will determine some of your thinking and some of the actions you will take. I may not fit in your ideology, but I fit 
into the word of God over my life. There was a word by prophet Elisha. The man of God had given a prophecy and the word was hanging in the air. 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 2. Quickly, I'm wrapping up. Help me very fast. And Ahaziah fell down. 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 2. 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 Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, that saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Verse 2. That was a farming time. There was no food to the point that people were eating, people were selling animal drink. And women were killing their children and eating. That, is the, that was the severity of the farming. And the prophet came and said, tomorrow about this time, one dollar will be equal to one Ghana city. Then the finance minister. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God. Be careful how you answer a man of God. And said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes. Those who went to spy on the land, eh? majority of them died in the wilderness because they came back with an evil report. You will see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat it. He had a small mind. He knew God has windows in heaven. Most of us know that God can, there are windows in heaven. But we have a small mind. How will those windows open? God said, pay your tithe. Bring your tithe. Small mind, you keep your tithe. Say, if even God opens them, it will not happen. It will not, it can't happen. How can Ghana, one Ghana city be equal to the dollar? If even all the MBA finance students come together and bring a policy, ha, it will not happen. The Bible said the word of God was moving in the air. When intellectuals rejected it, God's word will not prosper in you because you are illiterate or you are educated. No. The word of God prospers in the lives of people who have believing hearts, who have big hearts to believe God for what he has said. So when the finance minister of the king rejected it, the word of God settled on four lepers. Say lepers. Quarter four, quarter. Leprous people. Rejected people. I don't think they went to school because, in fact, they are not supposed to come to church. They were white and it eats up their limbs and eats up their eyelid and eats up their lips. When you see a leprous man, he's very infectious. You shake them, you may pick up the virus or the bacteria. Macrobacteria lepra. That is the name of the bacteria. Someone say Macrobacteria Lepra. Siankakra, it will help you. The word of God settled on them. And something began to move in them. Verse 3. Their thinking pattern. I told you, the prophetic word on your mind will determine how you think. He said, and there were four lepers, men at the entering in of the gate. And they said to one another, when the Finance minister rejected the word. Now the word came on them. And they said, they began to think. This is how you get to know that they were thinking. Why sit we here until we die? If you are not thinking, you can't say this. Because they realized there was famine. They started thinking. Why should we sit here and we die? The word of God over your life will cause you to think. And when God is moving you, don't resist. Allow God to move you. Listen to the testimony the lady said. When I said that the Spirit of God is here, if somebody is believing, blah, 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 you should sow a seed. I'm sure God spoke to her. Take the 43 Ghana in your pocket, the only money you brought, and put it in the, the, the basket. I didn't even know. 
Sometimes we come to church and God will be ministering to us. We resist. But the lepers did not resist. Verse 4. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there because there's no food, no water. And if, so you see from this verse, they were thinking, yes or no? Hello? Hello? They were thinking. And I'll show you that they chose the option that was bigger. He said, and if we sit still here, we die also. The second option. And now the third one. Now therefore, come. And let us fall into the host of the seniors. If they save us alive, we shall live. I don't understand that English there. If they save you, won't you live? And if they kill us, we shall die. If they kill you, won't you die? <laughs> I was laughing this morning when I was really meditating. On that. I didn't see this, but this is making me laugh. If they save you, you live. We know. And if they kill you, you will die. <laughs> if they kill us, we will die. The bigger option. And the Bible said when they began to enter the camp, when they entered into the uttermost part of the camp, they realized that there was nobody, nobody in the camp. Because God made the serious hear the sound of a mighty army coming. He chose the bigger option. I pray for you that you begin to think big. As you follow God, rise up on your feet, somebody. Oh, if you are clapping, you clap and you rise up on your feet. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer that, oh Lord, usher me into my next dimension of glory in you. Lift up your voice, lift up your two hands and talk to God. Talk to God. Somebody talk to God. Talk to God. Let me hear your voice. Pray. Lord, usher me into a deeper dimension of your glory. You also, also, you also want to pray that Lord deliver me from the spirit of unbelief in Christ Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. That Lord deliver me. The word did not profit them because they did not mix the word with faith as we did. Pray that God deliver me from the spirit of unbelief. Be deliver me from the spirit of mediocre thinking. Deliver me from the spirit of small thinking. Let me see myself in the image that you see me. Labagadaba. Irrespective of my family limitations. Irrespective of my academic limitations. Irrespective of my inabilities. Oh Lord. A picture of your image. Let me walk in the picture of your image. Let me have the mind of lions. Rabosa da la caba, lebro koto bahadias, balande le kosi abakata. As I see, I will become. Somebody pro prophesy. As you see in the word, you will become. Whatever God reveals to you in His word, you will become. As you see, 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 you will become. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you believe, you will become Rabba Baba Baba Zola Baba Baba ba. You may not see the rain You may not see the wind But the dishes will be filled with water Somebody pray In the next 30 seconds Pray the Lord infuse into my spirit The mind of a lion The thinking of giants Rabba Koda Baba My situation is not ending like this I will think myself out of this. I will think myself out of this. And when the prodigal son came to his senses, he returned to his father's house. 
May the Lord give you the grace to think yourself out of your situation. May the Lord do according to your thinking pattern. As you think big, may the Lord do big things in your life. Really, raise your two hands and receive these blessings. As you think big, may the Lord cause big things to happen to your life. In the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. Do not be afraid, for I will not put you to shame. I will not cause you to be embarrassed. It's time for you to think big. The Lord who has us to think big, may he give you that spirit to think big. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a mighty clap of it. One of the things that big thing, your clap was not good. One of the things that big thinking will do for you is that you'll be able to move along with God. Elijah was in the brook. And when the brook dried up, God came to him to move to Zarephath. If you have a small mind, you will get stuck in the brook. Hmm. But God was going to show him another water body called Jordan. But he was in a brook. A brook is a, an enclosed pool in a cave. God caused it to dry. Some of us, sometimes God will dry up your resources. God will close certain doors because he wants you to think big. If you don't think big, you will die there. If you don't think big, your glory will end there. Sometimes God will tighten. Some people will promise you certain things and God will let them fail you. Because that is not the best option. It will limit you. There are some helps that when you receive, it can limit you. Not every help is a help. Some helps gets you stuck. I pray for you that the mind of God, the mind of Christ, will be your portion. Celebrate the Lord with a good clap and add a shout of praise. Add a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Please take your seat wherever you are.